Hello everybody, welcome back to the Unicat channel. Uh, today I would like to introduce you to uh, another Unicat vehicle. But uh, before, please uh, subscribe the Unicat channel, press the bell to be reminded if you want to follow us closely. This vehicle here is based on a Volvo FH12 and uh, it is 15 years old and actually it's my vehicle and uh, I bought it a couple of years back. I did some changes and some upgrades so far. More upgrades will follow later, but I would like to present it to you in the stage it is now. As you might know, the Volvo FH12 is not even an all-wheel drive chassis, but this one actually is an off-road chassis. So what we did is uh, to buy that 4x2 chassis and uh, we removed the original axles. We installed axles with independent suspension, uh, with uh, disc brakes, with central tire inflation system, and we even have a rear axle steering. Not only that, we changed the axles to state-of-the-art off-road axles. We also had to install a transfer case to get the power to the front and to the rear axle. And uh, pretty much the only parts of the drivetrain which are still original are the engine, which is a 480 horsepower engine and the automatic transmission, uh, which is originally coming from Volvo. So if you now ask yourself, why I personally drive a Volvo, while most of the other vehicles are either MAN or Mercedes trucks, the answer is quite simple. When this is a second-hand vehicle, I'm the third owner, it's 15 years old, it has 190,000 Ks on it now, and, uh, but it's just still in super good shape, and, uh, and we wouldn't have had time to build a vehicle for myself. So I took the opportunity to buy one which became available. Um, and uh, I have to say the Volvo is, from a technical point of view and quality point of view, it's on the same level as MAN or Mercedes. Uh, just that when we use vehicles which have the all-wheel drive and everything from the factory, the MAN and Mercedes offer a wider range of combinations. But as for this chassis, we, we used the cab, the chassis, the frame, the engine and the transmission, but everything else was uh, new and different, uh, it actually didn't matter. So the real reason why it's a Volvo is that at that time it was the only truck which came with a full automatic transmission from the factory. Speaking a bit more about these axles, which you might not ever have seen before on a truck. They are used for firefighting trucks, uh, which are used on, on uh, airports, where the vehicles have to go very fast off-road. They are also used on military vehicles. Um, they are quite complex, so if you want the best performance, this is the right axle for you, but for normal travel, 
the normal suspension and the original equipment of a truck will do it. These axles here have a wheel travel of 280 millimeters, which is like uh, 11 inches. Um, you have uh, hydrostat suspension, which we adapted to this type of axle. So you can actually lower and, and raise the whole frame and body with cap, with everything by that said 280 millimeters. So you can go quite low, you can go quite high and in between whatever you adjust, you have quite a lot of wheel travel. The strength of the suspension, uh, the stiffness of the suspension can be adjusted by the pressure of the nitrogen, uh, which is used here for actually doing the suspension itself. As said before, the truck has disc brakes at the front and at the rear. It has a central tire inflation system where the air goes through the axle and uh, we can adjust the tire pressure from about 0.5 bar up to 6 bar, which is the pressure we run here on the highway. Inside the tires, we have the run flats, uh, which I have shown in another video before. So even if I have a puncture, the, the tire doesn't go down completely. As with big tires like the 16.0 R20, which are mounted here, the, the turning angle of the axle is quite limited because it otherwise would collide with, it, with the chassis rails. We have installed a rear axle steering on this truck as well. So as you can see, on demand, if I turn the steering wheel and it, and it steers in the front, it also steers in the rear to reduce the turning circle. We can also switch it the other way so that you have uh, what we call dog walk. So the, the front and rear wheels are parallel and you actually go sideways. Okay, let me show some of the features of this truck which we found necessary and some uh, not necessary quite, but quite useful. So for example, behind this uh, opening we have rails to provide water and uh, here we have a rail uh, to provide air pressure. Okay, so here on the right side of the truck, we have a compartment for propane tanks. And uh, here is of course the entrance door. And here we have a huge fuel tank, which uh, holds about 500 liters of diesel. So that's 120, 130 gallons. Uh, but there is another fuel tank on the other side that gives us a range of about 2,000, 2,500 kilometers, uh, depending on how fast you drive. As we definitely prefer to live outside most of the day, uh, we have an outside kitchen where we probably do like 90% of the cooking overall. So it's important. And uh, what we have here is, uh, first of all, in case we want to do something with induction. We have a small induction cooker, but mainly we are using um, a grill, which is a propane grill. And um, 
it's big enough for us and for guests. And of course, even the space inside the grill is used to store uh, the kitchen equipment here. And uh, then uh, we also have uh, a water here, uh, cold water and hot water. We can also use it oops, as an outside shower here. Uh, but uh, we also have a small basin here, so if we need to do some little washing. As no space should be unused, we have also uh, a small table here, small table board. And that small table board is normally stored inside the entrance door. And we can very quickly attach it here to the outside panel. And we have a lot of extra space uh, to, uh, yeah, to, to have your drinks and, and whatever you want. As you can see on the back, there is a military type trailer hitch. And the purpose for that is to tow a trailer, which will be a project for next year. That will allow us to carry a small car. I mean, a four x four car, of course. And that trailer will also be a range extender by having huge solar power, extra batteries, extra fuel tanks, extra fresh water tanks. Uh, but as long as we are traveling without that trailer, we are using our fatty e-bikes. The reason why we choose fatty bikes with uh, 4.8 inch tires, uh, electric motor, 750 watt hour battery, carbon frame, is that we wanted bikes which can go where the truck can go. And these bikes just do that. So they are a bit custom built, uh, but they fit, fit perfectly with a truck like this. Like on the other side, we have an outside storage compartment here in the driver's cab. And uh, we use this for self-recovery gear, electric chainsaw, uh, wheel chocks and, and stuff like that. Things you might need to have on hand very quickly. So this is a very good and very accessible space for that. Then under the body here, we have the Fisher Panda generator, which we actually hardly use because uh, we also have a lot of solar power on the roof and a large battery capacity. And then we have more fuel capacity uh, to create that range of over 2000 kilometers in total. Here on the left side of the truck, in the back, we have a storage area which uh, contains our uh, uh, chairs, uh, smaller chairs, so we have four in total. We also have a small table, so if, we are, if it's just the two of us and we want to have a quick setup, we use that small table. And then in this compartment, we also have a telescopic ladder to access the roof. In this little compartment, I have my little fishing gear. I still have to work on that, I think. On the driver's cab, we have a roof rack with branch guards at the front, and also plenty of LED lights for high beam, for wide angle, and even special lights really going to the side. On top, there are storage boxes and the spare wheel. So now you might ask the question, why do you put the spare wheel on top of the driver's cab as you don't do it on other trucks? The difference here is that we blocked the air suspension of the driver's cab, because if you have an air suspended driver's cab and you have a heavy load at the top, your cab does crazy movements and that's not very comfortable to drive. But as we have 1600 tires, which give a lot of suspension. As we have independent wheel suspension, which is a very, very soft and very responsive uh, suspension. And as we have air seats, uh, to have the cab suspended at 
on top would just be too much. You would have four suspension systems not really cooperating perfectly, so we eliminated that cap suspension here. So now let me show you the driver's cap and uh, what you can better see from outside are the custom built door panels with uh, proper speakers. There is also sound insulation underneath like everywhere, but let's go inside and have a look. So welcome to the driver's cab. It's actually five real steps up, so you're sitting really high here. And uh, if you bring the chassis to the maximum uh, level, then it's even a bit higher. So it's a good place, very good visibility. We have large windows. We even have windows in the back. New seats here, that's latest technology, adjustable uh, seat belt height all that stuff, ventilation, um, of course, full adjustment, everything. We have a large bed for our dog in the center, probably the most important place in the whole truck. And uh, we have some space in the back, which we can make to a bed, uh, or somebody can sit behind the passenger seat uh, if we have to take somebody for, for a short distance. Um, yeah, here in the front, we have uh, all the switches. We have a nice new um, steering wheel with all the controls on the steering wheel. Uh, Unicat logo, of course. And uh, then in the overhead panel, we have the gauges for the auxiliary fuel tanks. Um, we have the controls for the, for the chassis height and also for the leveling, because with this uh, independent suspension axles with hydrostats, of course, you can level the vehicle very exactly and also with, with big differences between front, rear, left and right. And now we go inside. Okay, welcome to my mobile home. As you could see from the outside, this body has a lifting roof. So when you come in, the first thing typically you do is to raise the roof. But as you can see, even if the roof is down, you can use the bathroom, you have access to all the storages, you can use the kitchen, uh, and you can even sit upstairs here in the seating area. Uh, while the only thing that's not really accessible is the bed, which is upstairs. To lift the roof, I only have to push a button, but I have to do it from here because here I have the overview of everything. And so I push the button and the lift go and the roof goes up. That's it. As the windows have electric drive systems as well, 
I can close the mosquito screen before I actually open the window, this one here. But as you can see by all the buttons, I can open every window from here. All the windows in the seating area, the window at the bed, uh, and uh, also the roof hatch, I can operate from here. In the back of the body, we have a huge seating area. You can easily sit with six people, but we have also been here with eight people and it was still comfortable. Um, under the pedestal, we have uh, outside storage, we have water tanks, we have technical equipment, uh, which all finds its place because uh, the pedestal is uh, quite has quite some height, so it's two steps up. And uh, even under the, under the seats, uh, there are more storages. Uh, so storage is not a problem in this vehicle. And the other nice thing is through the lifting roof, you have a lot of clearance above you. So you feel really like sitting in a, in a normal house, more or less, uh, because yeah, you have so much space. Now the table is in a lower position. We can raise it and lower it and we can expand it to have a, a eating table. Now it's more like a sofa table where you can have your drinks uh, while you relax here, maybe with your feet up on the seat. To convert the coffee table to an eating table, we have to raise it, which we do by pushing a button and then we just unfold the sides left and right. When you want to go to bed, it's just a few steps away. You go up here. And you are in your bed. The bed here upstairs is uh, 1.8 by 2 meters. That's a king size bed, very comfortable. You have storages on the sides and you also have storages behind the bed for your clothes. Um, you have a window at the back for very good ventilation and you have also a very big roof hatch which completely opens, so if you want, you can sleep under the stars. Let me show you a little bit how we have organized our storages here inside the vehicle. So we have uh, drawers here for kitchen equipment and... Uh, oh, okay, it doesn't open. We have a central locking system for all the drawers, all the doors, so I have to unlock them first. So, so we have a drawer here for provisions. Uh, we have uh, a wine cellar here where each bottle is separately organized. Then uh, we have uh, a cupboard here, which is very important in the morning because we have instantly access to coffee, uh, espresso cups, cream maker, large cups, capsules, bread maker is also here, and the ice maker uh, is also on board. So here on the opposite side, we have the kitchen. We have two fridges, 
also we sent locking system each is 120 liters plus a freezer compartment uh, then uh, we have the Corian worktop here with a propane cooker and the induction cooker my wife wanted both and as this was a pre-owned vehicle and 15 years ago we used propane we kept it so we have both now we have a extraction hood here above the cookers um, we have uh, cutting boards here we have uh, oven with, uh, um, uh, with a steamer then uh, here we have uh, our cutlery with a nice good knives so they are all uh, hold by magnets so they don't rattle around um, we have our provisions here so here are our cereals and, and all the other stuff all in special boxes so when we come into the vehicle we fill it up we don't have all the waste going with us so we have our own organization system uh, yeah and last but not least uh, you have to have a waste bin two in this case we have the, the bags here so so every space is just used uh, on the countertop it's a Korean countertop very easy to clean there is an edge here in front it goes up here so it stays clean easily because this is my job and we have um, uh, we have a faucet here which has a uh, motion control so you open it but then the water flows but if you move here your hand then the water stops and goes on if you if you move again um, yeah you have two basins you have uh, uh, the the cleaning stuff coming from there so I think it's a pretty good kitchen for a mobile vehicle So now here in the front, above the entrance area, we have a bookshelf and another shelf uh, where we can put additional kitchen equipment or whatever comes. Uh, we have the kitchen paper rolls here and then uh, we have uh, a large storage here which is good for golf bags or other bigger equipment. Um, then we have our glasses here. So we have the red wine glasses, the white wine glasses and the water glasses and uh, they are all compressed by air when I close the central locking system. So in the, in the front here we have the control panel and another small shelf where we can put things, where we have our torch, some hooks to hang our jackets and then here we have the passage, a sliding door to the driver's cab. Uh, we have a spy here so we can see through and then we have wardrobes here on top and uh, we have um, washer dryer uh, in this compartment here and here we have the bathroom we have a household size toilet uh, we have a basin also made in the same Korean material uh, all stainless steel faucets um, we have a rain shower in the bathroom we have a heated floor, uh, we have a mirror and storage underneath and above the sink. So it's not big but it's good enough for two people.
So that was all for this video. Hope you enjoyed the tour through my personal vehicle. And uh, thank you for watching and bye bye until the next video. Bye. Ah, I forgot something. There is another button. You push the button, you get a hook. Bye bye.